Hello there, prospective expats and future teachers of Korea. Uh, I'm Christopher Smith, and this is my friend Corey Brown. We're here to talk to you today about getting your FBI background check. Yes, part two of the Instruct Asian Checkers. Uh, as you may have heard or may have looked into the research, the FBI background check can be the most painstaking and time-consuming aspect of the whole document gathering process to go to Korea and get your visa. So, to make that a little easier for you and to put your fear at ease, uh, we're here to talk to you today about uh, what the steps are, why you should do it first before you do anything other uh, in terms of gathering documents. Um, and basically just to make the whole thing a little less stressful on you. We've gone through it, we've been through it ourselves, um, it does take time, you will stress at times, but it's not that bad, you'll get it done. So the very first step in getting the FBI background check, I recommend go to the FBI website. Yep. The FBI website will have links directly discussing uh, obtaining a, a criminal background check, as they may call it, or the FBI general background check. Either one is basically, it's a general background check to ensure that you don't have any felonies or crimes that may disqualify you from working abroad in Korea. So once you've uh, made yourself familiar with the website and you found the link, the link on the website will have instructions on how to go about obtaining the background check. The first step that you're gonna have to do in obtaining the background check is getting your fingerprints. Yep. Now these days with technology, they have a lot of these live scan facilities around San Diego where it's actually the laser fingerprints and it's done almost instantaneously. Unfortunately, for the FBI background check, those are not accept acceptable. You're going to have to do the old fashioned cardstock fingerprints, which can actually be obtained rather easily if you go to your local law enforcement agency I myself went to a sheriff's office that was near my house. I went to a police office here in San Diego, but every police office should have this service. Right, and it will cost you around 20 bucks or so, not too expensive. Um, and then so once you have your fingerprints done and they're on the card stock with the correct information, you actually take this um, and then you write out a check for the fee of the uh, background check evaluation. Um, which is something, if I recall, around $30. Yeah, things about that. Yeah, give or take. We can look into the exact information for you. Um, and then you're going to mail that to the FBI. Now, here's where the waiting begins. Oh, the waiting. Oh, the waiting. Oh, oh. the waiting. Oh. It takes a while at this point. Oh, yeah. And it's the federal government. And if anybody knows about what's going on right now, it can take a while and they may take their sweet time. Here's the good news. You can trust that they are going to process it. They will get it back to you. It will take approximately 10 to 12 weeks to get your background check back. Maybe longer. Maybe longer. Oh. It just depends. Right now with the government shutdown, no one's really certain, but it could take around three months. So just be prepared for that. That's why we recommend you do this first. Yep. Uh, it's probably the most important process in the uh, whole get document gathering phase. And it is an important process because the people in Korea want to know, you know, are you a pedophile? Are you a criminal? And I mean, if you are these things, they don't want you to teach there. Right. So it's fully understandable that this is a part of the process. Oh yeah, and you have to do it. And uh, once you get the background check, uh, it's good for six months upon your receipt of it. So uh, you can rest assured that as long as you don't have to switch jobs in between that time that your background check will be good for the duration of your first contract. Um, also, when you get the background check back approximately 12 weeks upon sending it off, uh, you're going to have to get the document notarized and apostilled in order for it to be approved by uh, the Korean consulate in order to get your visa. When well, you're like, great, how do I do that? Once you get the document back from the FBI, you should take it to a notary public that's within your area and have them sign off on the authenticity of the document. FBI background checks are fairly common. They will not be unfamiliar with this document. They should have no problem signing off on it. Once you have the document notarized, you're going to have to take it to the county registrar's office in your county in order for them to authenticate the notary you took it to. As long as it's an approved notary, they should sign off on it. You'll be okay. I think it's a $5 fee to get this done. The notary itself should cost about $10. After you've done that, you've had your document notarized, you've had the notary approved by the registrar's office, then you have to get it apostilled. 
this is where a lot of people get confused, where a lot of people are uncertain what is an apostille even. Me and Corey have another video where we discuss an apostille and how to go about getting one. We'll review it again here really quick. An apostille is basically like an international notarization. It's a commonly used... For ease of uh, the process, you may want to look directly into having the FBI apostille the document themselves, which they can do and they offer on their website. I believe it's an additional fee uh, yes. that you're going to have to uh, pay in a check to them when you send off for the background check initially. However, it can be a lot easier than getting the document back and trying to apostille it yourself. That way you may need to take a trip to the Secretary of State office uh, or even go to your state's capital. To get <laughs> Long story short, you have options. And uh, if you need to get your document apostilled, you can do it through the FBI. Uh, they have a service that they offer on their website. It costs a little bit of money that you'll send in when you send off for the background check initially. Or you can get the background check back and then get the apostille done yourself at the Secretary of State office. You can go in person or mail it off. We recommend you go in person yes. to avoid any hassles or mail glitches. But uh, nonetheless, the FBI background check, important step in the process, the most important, the most time consuming. Get it started, get it started now. If you're watching this video, get on it right now. And another thing I want to add is there are many services that uh, the FBI has contracted called channeler services. Um, the one that I think is the most reputable is one called Accurate Biometrics. And basically, the FBI realizes that so many people want background checks done. They've hired some companies to take a little bit of their course of their uh, course load. And so, Accurate Biometrics, they will do the whole process with the, the, the background check and they'll send it back to you. I don't know if they'll really get the apostille in there. Maybe they will. You should check on their website. Um, but they will do the whole process in maybe two weeks instead of potentially three or four months. Uh, they do charge an extra fee. So I'll have a link in the description of this video to all of the channeler services where you could potentially do this process in a much more timely manner. And if you're asking someone who waited 11 weeks to receive his background check, that is worth it. It's yeah. worth it, that absolutely. Worth it. The time it takes to get the background check done could potentially indicate what types of job offers are available yeah. when you have the process done. The sooner you get your background check done, the sooner you get this paperwork done for the visa, the sooner you can get your job and be on your way to Korea making money and living abroad. Well, and really, the sooner we can line up jobs for you. True. You know, if you have any specific preferences in South Korea, if there's maybe a specific time you really want to start, the only way we can nail a contract for you is if we have all the things ready um, for, for you to potentially go to Korea. So, uh, you know, definitely do this stuff as quickly as possible. I highly recommend the channeler services. Absolutely. Well, good luck to you in getting your apostille and uh, getting your FBI background checks. Uh, we hope to help you out any way we can with any future document gathering or information gathering on uh, looking into going to Korea and teaching. Uh, I'm Christopher Smith. This is Corey Brown.